Hi everybody, Mark Salada here, the owner of 911 Rapid Response, and today we wanted to do something different with the, the uh, vehicle highlight that uh, I'm sitting on here. This vehicle was made actually for Dunkirk Fire Department, it's our brush truck. So we're going to talk about three things, people, product, and process. So people, that's the first thing I like to start with, is we have some of the best employees here at 911 Rapid Response, the graphics division and engine apparatus. and why I say that is is because it takes a lot of people to make this happen and this happen correctly you know there's um, many moving parts of to build an apparatus like I'm sitting on and there's a lot of things that can get messed up really easily in in that whole entire process which brings us to the process and the process is important and our processes on our back end are bar none uh, they are they are smooth. They work very efficiently the whole way from the quoting to the ordering to the purchase orders to the building the trucks to the delivery process. Our process over the last year since 2006 when I started, we have fine-tuned these processes and we fine-tune them every day. Along with our 2019 rapid growth plan, the processes are changing a little bit to better serve the customers and give better customer service. And it's just putting more people into different roles so people aren't overwhelmed with things that they're doing and can focus better on those roles, inadvertently giving the customer much better service. The process with something like this might not seem a lot. You might just see this as a, as a Super Duty truck with a body on it and a pump in the back, right? But there's a lot more to that, okay? Here at Rapid Response, our people take care of the process from start to finish. We help you get the truck. We get the body. We custom make top rails to hold hose. We get the, the skid tank from CET, as you see here behind me, and we make sure all those tolerances work 100%. So when you see the skid tank have an eighth inch clearance on either side, there's a reason for that. When you see it come right to the back where it's supposed to stop for the tailgate to closure, there's a reason for that. This stuff just doesn't happen automatically, okay? It uses processes and it uses the correct people to make this application work perfectly. We get into products. Products are very important. Uh, we found throughout the years, bad product, good product, expensive product, affordable product, and overall, our product is outstanding. I would say for the last two years, our product is, is bar none. You see a lot of wheel and items used on this vehicle. CET skid tank here in the back, one of the best skid tanks that, that, that is made in the back of the vehicle here down to the nozzles, the hose, and everything is supplied right here at 911 Rapid Response. Down to the custom printed chevrons on the back, to the graphics, to this custom coating that's on these top rails that we did for longevity of the customer. So we have great people here, we have excellent processes, and our products are outstanding. We put all three of those together and we have a striving business as we move forward in the upcoming years here at Rapid Response. We're excited to show you this vehicle. I'm excited to highlight it for you. I want you to pay attention to the details down to the, down to the powder coated wheels just so it looks right. While all in mind, keeping budgets in mind. Uh, that's one thing that we are, are really proud of here as well, is that we can build something like this, but keep it with an affordable budget at the same time. Want to show this to you? Thanks for watching. Appreciate all you subscribers on our social media sites. And again, if you're ever in this area, stop in, ask for a tour. We'd be happy to give you a tour of our facility. At the front of the vehicle here on the Dunkirk brush truck, and we're going to go over this with you in, in some detail of exactly what we did. So we took off that front bumper because, I mean, really, who likes a factory front bumper in a brush truck, right? So we installed this ranch hand front bumper. It has a nice uh, grill protection here in the front, some uh, side uh, corner protection here with the rails and a nice uh, solid front bumper so if they do hit any type of trees or anything they got the front of this truck protected. We have four wheeling M2 series lights synchronized which are also synchronized with our T ions on the side of the on the side as well. We're really about synchronization giving that look it doesn't cost any extra but it's much more functional when you have stuff synchronized. We have a worn winch with a synthetic cable in it not a, not a metal cable braided cable it's actually a synthetic cable great ratings don't have to worry about it rusting flying apart or anything like that 
And then we have some uh, work lights down here at the bottom that we placed to give them some extra scene lights. One thing that you probably already noticed with this vehicle is, is we actually don't have a light bar on it. And one would say, why didn't you put a light bar on a brush truck or on a fire, appar on a fire apparatus like this? Ah, there's many reasons. Number one, customer uh, driven is, is one of those factors. And second thing is it's actually pretty smart because if you're using it as a brush truck, generally you're going through places that have low limbs, you know, low tree lines, shrubbery, stuff like that. And the last thing you want to do is, is rip off a, a $2,000 light bar off the top of the vehicle, you know, or, or damage it, break a lens or something. So we can give ample warning with this at the same time just by using an inner visor light as you see the wheel and one that's installed in this vehicle here now. We're going to walk around here to the side. <laughs> We're going to get to the wheels, okay? So we put a set of uh, Goodyear Wrangler tires on this customer requested uh, brand and, and, and series of it. But what we did with these rims is, and this is something that I spoke to you just a little bit about when it comes down to people, process, and product, right? We have a standard steel wheel that instead of upgrading this to an expensive aluminum wheel or a black aluminum wheel, we were, we were able to budgetly, affordably take this silver wheel and powder coat it. We did actually a semi-gloss powder coat on the wheel so it matches the other black in the vehicle. It still will clean up nice so if it gets brake dust and stuff like that on it that wheel will still clean up really nice but uh, it, it, it's very effective and affordable and it's done 100% here at Rapid Response. From the demounting process of the wheel to the remounting to the powder coat 100% done at Rapid Response. We have all the equipment here to do that type of work. We're going to go around to the side. We have a pair of uh, the HDX series Weston uh, running boards on it. And, and what we love about these running boards is they kind of act as a, as a rocker panel protection, but it gives you actually a very functional step to actually get in the truck, which is really nice. A lot of running boards are cosmetic looks. They make the truck look nice, but they just don't work. One nice thing with this is they're actually functional and these running boards actually do work. We added two T-ions here on the side of this running board, which are synchronized with all the other T-ions on the side of the vehicle. And these also go to full white floodlight the whole side. So if they are out in the middle of a field, they'll have nice scene lights the whole way around this vehicle that nobody's tripping and falling hazards and anything like that. The, gra the, graphics, the graphics are done from our market graphics division, done right here at Rapid Response, 100%. Uh, custom printed, so all this is custom printed, and uh, we have a nice black reflective stripe going over the side of the vehicle. As we come around to the side, we have a napi aluminum body on it. You're going to notice this side is configured different from the other side. The other side is a longer compartment up top for shovels, saws, and that type of thing. Customer requested, and we helped them uh, pick which body would work the best for them. And then what we did is in our fabrication department, we took this material here and uh, we cut it out, bent it in our bender, welded everything together, and then we had it uh, coated from uh, a company called PPC, and we made them custom troughs up top. So it looks fluent like it's one part of the body, but this was actually made in-house here at, the, at our Vengeant Fabrication Shop right here at Rapid Response as well. All the interior compartments actually have uh, LED lighting and it's a little hard to see we're out here in the daylight but it actually has ROM uh, LED lighting in it that we put they mount really nice in there close this up let's move around to the side we have a custom auto eject customer required a red indicator light when the it's plugged in that it's a charging light so that's actually that light is on we know that the charger is physically putting out uh, voltage and that's a lot harder than just oh we're just going to hook it to the output of the charger right because if you hook it to the output of the charger you have 12 volts always coming from the battery which means a light would always be on so there's a little uh, extra stuff in there we'll call it to make this function work correctly as we move around to the back of the vehicle we have the new wheel and ion series which are the longer versions they fit real nice on the back of these trucks they work real nice with the factory taillights as you see here from Napide. 
I have right now the uh, rear warning lights on. These are 700 series uh, warning uh, scene lights, I should say, that are pointing out the back right now. Gives a real nice visibility out the back of the truck, scene lights out the back. And then these troughs, this is the hose trough, and this is this section here is actually for the hard sleeve. We even put a little handle up here, that way if they gotta get up top, they can grab a hold of it easily. I'll flip down the back here. This is a CET skid tank, it's a 250 gallon tank. It has a 23 horsepower Vanguard motor on it. We basically give them the sizes that we need, and then they make the unit force and ship it into us. We put a dominator stick up top. Again, comes down to this customization fit and finish. Very sleek, very clean on how it's mounted. It fits very well at that application. Gives them some higher level warning in the back of the vehicle, which is very important as well. Down to the nozzle holder here. We made that out of our fabrication shop. That was actually uh, used on our water jet machine. We cut the the number five out of four of them just to give them a little bit uh, customization here at, at no extra charge and gives a little finishing touch on, on our installs. And then that just closes back up real simple. We have some bed lights here as well so at nighttime you can easily see this pump operation and be able to function everything correctly when they are on a scene of a fire. So one thing that we added to this vehicle through the process is an airbag kit actually from the airlift company and, and the reason why we do that is is when the water tank gets full in here and they get all their equipment in here it's not unsafe to drive it, it still handles very well but it squats in the back because of the weight that's in the truck still within the GVW ratings of the truck with with no problem so what we did is we just added a very inexpensive uh, airbag kit which is mounted right in here and then the way we actually fill them, because you're gonna generally fill them and just let them go, it's about checking tire pressure is kind of what it's like. The air chucks then, what we did is we actually mounted them right in beside here, inside the compartment. That way those fittings and stuff are out of the weather. You know, instead of being outside here, they don't get all filled up with, you know, junk and stuff and you can easily fill those airbags and uh, properly put that truck. So right now, we have about uh, 60 pounds of air in the one bag and about 70, 75 pounds in the other bag. And the reason why they're different is that we actually level the truck by doing that. Gives that good stability on the road, uh, gives a good safety factor for driving. So there's more than just, you know, putting air in them and letting them go. There's actually a rule uh, to follow to make, that, uh, to make that work effectively, efficiently. So we're inside the vehicle here now and you're gonna see something a little different. We took out the back seat, customer request and made something uh, for them out of our Just Box It division, which is our organizer division, which we make uh, organizers and things of that nature, right like this one. Simple, but it works, right? So this is a three quarter inch uh, maple wood structure. And then we coat this actually in-house, this material, we actually spray this coating right here in-house. And it's nice, this is the same thing that's on the other side. So there's a air pack mount, a flashlight mount and an LED light mounted in there. And this is actually a transverse area that they can put stuff the whole way from one side to the other if they have something longer to put in. Uh, they only need two people to go out in this truck. It's not to haul a bunch of people out, it's to get the truck out there and to get gear out there. So this application works very well for that. One nice thing that's very important with brush trucks is, is keep your brush trucks short, right? Long extended brush trucks are more manpower brush trucks. Keeping it short lets the maneuverability much better in the field, especially when you're out in a field or trying to get through tight spaces like this department is going to do. So this is a real nice uh, application add-on that we're able to do here as well, 100% in-house. Uh, what you're also going to notice is there is this LED light here, and there's also LED light underneath here. It's a little harder to see it again because we're in daylight. But uh, we don't like to go into the factory harnesses to turn this type of lighting on right because we got to you have a problem getting into body control modules stuff isn't turned on anymore with 12 volt lights sometimes it uses you know 9.7 volts to turn stuff on and it can cause issues when people start cutting into that stuff so we stay out of that okay and what we did is in this vehicle we simply just put in a magnetic switch put it on a relay system. So when you open up this door, the lights come on. When you open up the other door, the other side comes on. It's, a, it's a, another way to ensure that our warranties stay separate from Ford 
to rapid response stuff and we don't have any conflicting issues, you know, if the vehicle would uh, have to go back to Ford, you know, we don't have to worry about uh, any pointing fingers or anything like that. So just a nice little touch that we added, uh, you know, for the customer as well. Inside the vehicle here, you're going to see a very simple concept. It's a, it's a Havis console. It has a wheel and controller in it. It has a, a cup holder there in the back because we know how important those are. And you're also going to see a voltmeter here, which is part of our VoltLink wiring system. So all of our wiring here at Rapid Response is more than just throw a whole bunch of red wires in, tuck it underneath the panels, and close it up, right? We use no electrical tape. Uh, that's a, that's a, something I hate to see be used in, in any install. Um, our harnesses that we use are actually more modern. It's generally not the, the, the typical split loom that you see all the time. It's more like a, a Chinese finger trap would be a good way to explain our wire harnesses. And then it's also tracing a green tracer. So Ford, Chevy, and Dodge can actually tell the difference between our upfitting stuff and theirs. That way they don't, that way they don't get into us. How we document that stuff is every tech in the shop has an iPad. Here we go back to our people and our processes, right? So we have all the text document what wire color does what, so we don't have 20 yellow wires throughout the vehicle. A blue wire does something, a red wire does something, a brown wire does something, and et cetera, and so on. So we can easily look up that wiring color chart, and that's standard across the board on every rapid response vehicle that we build. So we could build a vehicle for Dunkirk, Maryland, or we could build a vehicle for somebody in Vermont, and that wiring color chart is gonna stay the standard across the board for everybody. Very easy to add stuff on later because we know a lot of departments do that. And very easy to take maybe, let's say, uh, a vehicle from you know, a patrol function to maybe a chief function that would go from a light bar to a slick top. It's much easier. It's better cost of savings in the future for the customer because we don't have to worry about what color wire does what. We already know. Um, because everything is, everything is uh, standardized. So, real nice interior, simple concept here in the console. It is pre-wired with the uh, two radio antennas, radio wires, 12-volt ignition, and negative in the console. Everything is marked in the console as well with all that extras. So, if the customer, when they get it back, that their radio techs, their radio techs do their own install in their trucks, so we pre-prep everything for them. The radio install should take less than, than 10 minutes at the most. So everything is ready to go. And that's, again, part of our VoltLink wire harness. You know, it has a, a control board in there, which has diag fuses, the whole nine yards. That's part of our VoltLink system that we have. And the uh, voltmeter is just a little extra benefit to the customer so they know exactly where their vehicle's at. So 10 years from now, if they have an alternator issue or something like that, they can pinpoint it. Because these new vehicles just show you, you know, your, your voltage is good or bad. They don't give you an actual readout. So we feel that that's very important, which is standard on all our 911 rapid response installs. Thank you for letting me give you a tour. Thank you for your time today to let me explain to you the people, product, and process, which if you're an entrepreneur, I'm sure you've heard those three Ps before. Uh, keep in mind, watch for all our other videos that we do, watch for new upcoming things, watch for our new add-ons throughout the business within the next year, two, and so on. We are uh, growing and we are having a, a great time doing it and we are excited to take you along on that journey. Thank you and have a wonderful day.